Hey my friends, I hope we're all well. Today I'm gonna do something a little bit different. This is an educational video. I'm gonna talk about the process of reviewing products. Now sometimes I receive some products that I have never, ever, ever used before, but I'm gonna explain 10 major steps that I do in product reviews in my videos and hopefully can give you some ideas when you're actually creating some of your product videos. Now, I'd just like to mention that this video is gonna be about the Roborock H6 vacuum. And the reason why I actually did this with this is that I don't normally do products on vacuums. Now, I want to sort of explain how I actually do everything when it comes to something I've never done, but this also applies to stuff that I've done in, in the past as well in previous videos. Now, the first step is to research on the company. Now, you just really need to find as much information about the company and their products as possible. You really need to establish, you know, is this a credible company? Is it a good company? Will people find value in this product? Because there is no real point of reviewing a product if people don't actually find value in it. And also when you're doing the research, you know, research the specs. Find out a whole list of the specs and features the product has. Don't just research the specs on that product, research what the competitors are also doing. So find the competitors and see how this thing matches up to another product. And obviously research the price. So you need to price compare between all the products and see how that particular product holds in the market. And obviously this can definitely contribute to the end recommendation because if it's a cheap product and it has a whole bunch of features, then uh, potentially that might make it a little bit more appealing to some. But if it's an expensive product with not many features, then you know that could definitely play a part in the ending recommendation. Now step two is testing the product. Now this usually is the longest of them all. Now you need to do thorough testing of the product and you really need to push the limits of what you're actually reviewing. Sometimes you really need to think outside the box and test this where some people haven't tested before or where the product might actually uh, potentially have weaknesses. So you really need to identify if it has any weaknesses, but also identify the strengths and why you might actually choose this product over another product. And just really take your time. Don't rush through the testing phase because you might actually miss an important feature, which at times, you know, I've done before. Uh, so this is a really important process. So just take your time and test absolutely everything you can. Now, step three is data recording. Now, you really need to record all your findings within your testings. Now, I do this with absolutely every single one of my videos because I can never remember each setting that I've actually tested through. So just find all the details and write it all down. Make sure you write it down on a book or type it on a laptop, however you find the easiest. Make sure you check over all the specs that you've actually researched and try test them all and write it down. Data recording will help you establish what you have tested and what you actually haven't tested and what you need to test. So lastly, uh, try and establish the audience as well. So recording what kind of audience you might actually be appealing to or what this product will be appealing to. And this will sort of play an important role of how you structure your video. So this goes with absolutely any product as well. Now step four is thinking of improvements. Now there pretty much isn't one perfect product. So potentially finding out the weaknesses of any given product and mention them in the video, but also mention them how they could be improved. So uh, if it's technology based product, there could potentially be like a firmware update to fix certain issues. Now just make sure you contact the company as well if there are sort of any firmware updates and uh, the, obviously the companies won't know these issues until it's brought to their attention. But I guess some of them are actually complete hardware improvements, which the only way that these can be improved is a version two. Now, step five, once you think you have gotten everything you need, write a script. Now, plan and structure how you would actually do your video. This can be a timely process as well. Like, I like to script every one of my videos besides winging it. Like, I tend to miss a lot if I do wing it, and I tend to ramble on on a particular subject too much. So planning a video will actually give you like a nice sort of structure and be able to discuss everything you need to discuss. 
Now just make sure that you have an intro which should introduce the product um, and obviously what the product does and, and what it can actually do. Uh, in the middle should be all the testing and finding out the pros and cons and then obviously a conclusion which should sum up the whole video and your final thoughts. Now step six is filming. Now this is also another long process and you will need to cover multiple angles of testing the product and using the product. Now this can be done while you're actually testing, like in the testing phase, so you don't actually waste any time, but it can also be done afterwards as well, so you're kind of reenacting the testing. Uh, but just make sure it's as genuine as possible as well. Uh, now you just need to film the product itself as well to showcase what it looks like. So you can just take it into your studio, you know, set up some nice lighting and get some nice shots. This can separate you from the beginners. Now some beginners tend to just do basic testing shots. Now I like to get some nice tripod shots, tracking sliding shots. However you do it, just make it nice and dynamic and punchy. And obviously just make sure you get some nice lighting because lighting is extremely important when you do a lot of product shots. Filming all the necessary details and features might actually help you cover everything you talk about. And obviously filming the talking head shot like we are now, that's probably an important part. It should be pretty basic and quick to do. Now step seven is the assembly edit. The assembly edit is just to place all the content together and edit it into a basic story. Now you may actually need to cut some pieces from say the middle or the end and just move it around, whatever works best for the story. This is where you might actually establish that, hey, uh, I probably need an extra shot here. So uh, just make sure you write down if you have missed a shot and then you're able to film it later. And also there are, could be some B-roll inserts that you think that might actually work when you're talking about a particular section. So just make sure you write it down, describe what you need, and then you can film it all at once. Then obviously step eight is the reshoot. So avoiding a reshoot is obviously always best. Trying to plan absolutely everything in the beginning is obviously essential. This ensures that you don't miss anything, but always I miss shots and I have to reshoot certain things, but also usually it's because I have said something in a particular section uh, that I need to explain with a particular shot. So going out and doing some small reshoots is still perfectly fine. Now, while you do this as well, it is a good idea to create the thumbnail for step nine. Now this is a very important part for videos. Now I know some YouTubers actually like to just do a quick screen grab. So if they're holding up the product and they take a screen grab like that, I don't actually like to do that. Um, I try to do product shots of the actual product itself, or I just plan the shots all together. So thumbnails can be a little bit difficult sometimes, but really try and photograph something that is eye-catching and you would actually click on it. Now, depending on how the product ended up, could it could actually be a controversial one. So there could be like an issue with the product that you're pointing out, or it could highlight the product in a particular feature. Um, it could also be just a really dope product shot that looks epic in your studio. Um, everyone develops their own style and I guess you just really have to find yours. Now step 10, the final step is the final edit. Now I find music to overlay into this video at this point. Sometimes I do it a little bit earlier in the assembly edit, but I do prefer to find the music in the end just so I can fine tune my whole video. And also this is where I find a lot of sound design as well. So if you do want to add in, let's say like a, a name title and you want to give it some sound effects, this is a perfect time to do it. Just, you know, all those sort of small touching up phases. Now I usually use all my sound effects and music at Epidemic Sound. So link is in the description below if you do want to check them out. Now, once you have done all these steps, you are pretty much good to post, but make sure before you export, give it a couple of times over and just see if everything is all correct. Watch it over and over, just potentially jot down some of the notes if you do need things to be changed uh, before you export it and upload, because there has been a couple of times where I've uploaded it and I've just, I thought I'd do it a little bit of a quick watch and I've done something wrong and it's a bit of a spelling mistake or I've said something wrong or there's just been some weird cutting. Don't go through that whole process of exporting and uploading because it's timely. Make sure you do it right there and then. But anyway guys, that is absolutely my 10 step process on reviewing products and just breaking it down for you guys. So I really did hope you found this very useful. If you did, 
thumbs up if you found it entertaining, thumbs up. Also subscribe to my YouTube channel, that helps my channel grow. I'm really keen to at least get past 20K this year. But anyway, as per usual, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Let's get it.